Hello, hello, dear friends, and welcome to Arting with Stevie. This week we are going to do something very interesting. So this is the Red Rover Challenge, which the amazing artist Dina Tolufsen has arranged for, uh, you know, artist community building, which is really awesome and really fun. And the idea was that you either had to do something predominantly red or something that was related to a dog which was where Rover comes in um, and I I kind of <laughs> went a little bit crazy <laughs> with the with the prompts but it's cool you guys know me and um, basically I was like ooh but Red Rover makes me think of like the Mars Rover because Red Planet Mars and um, you know the rover, the Mars rover. And then I thought about a Mars rover as in a dog that was on Mars. <laughs> and um, yeah, and that's that's where we are here. So I also did something really nerdy, which is I painted most of this using the pigment Mars Black, which is PBK11, which is actually an iron oxide. So that's, I mean, if you don't know, that's why Mars is red, because of the high concentration of iron oxide, other than, otherwise known as rust, um, in its sand. And that's why it's known as the red planet. So, my muse. This doggo is known as Laika. And Laika is close to the, well, it originates from the Russian word for bark. And she was one of the first dogs to go out of the Earth's atmosphere. She actually went up in the Sputnik 2, so it was part of the Russian space program. The Americans preferred chimps because they thought that primates were closer to humans. And I'm just like, well, yeah, you guys know how I feel about testing things on animals instead of humans. So... <laughs> Nothing's closer to a human than a human. <laughs> anyway, um, she was lovingly called Mutnik because she went up in the Sputnik too. And she unfortunately died. But on the pro side, lots of her comrades lived. So at least there's that. Um, if you want to look her up, she's very, very cute, um, but her story is very sad, so, you know. Disclaimers. <laughs> anyway, so I thought I'd talk about these dogs because I feel like they're actually amazing heroes. They basically had no choice in the matter, obviously, because dogs don't speak in the language that consent forms are made in. Um, and yet they contributed epically to science. And they, in some way, have played a role in our sort of understanding of space, as limited as it may be currently. Um, I think that things like the Mars rover wouldn't even exist without dogs like Laika. So that's why I thought I would pay tribute to this lovely lady. So all of the dogs in these space programs were actually strays, which is very interesting because apparently there was this idea that strays were used to like living on the streets, so that made them more hardy. And I don't know. I mean, I guess no one wants to sp send Granny's favorite dog into space on a one-way mission. <laughs> so <laughs> there's always that. But they were also all females. So yay. <laughs> some, some girl power there. Um, mostly just because of like just physiological reasons. And yeah, they were really awesome. And some of them actually came back and they were healthy. And one of the the, pa the famous pairs actually had some of their puppies go to JFK to go and, you know, live the high life in the White House as, uh, I don't know, like, what would you say? Like peace offerings or... I don't know, nose snubs? Because it's like, yeah, no. Our animals lived. <laughs> um, yeah, the Americans did a weird thing where they named some of the chimps that went up 
Albert one, two, three, and four. And that was just very strange, especially considering that uh, none of the Alberts did very well. But anyway, that's another story for another sad time. So I was a bit torn because I didn't know if it was a good thing to sort of immortalize this doggo um, because I don't think that what happened was good and even some of the people who worked uh, with these dogs in Russia later said that they felt that what they found out um, about like science and space and everything that was discovered from these dogs missions was not actually worth sacrificing the dogs um, but I also think that what happened happened and I think that we should just remember what our lovely furry friends do for us and their bravery and it's very impressive. I mean Laika actually went up into space, first creature that went and she got there alive and she even started eating when she was up in space. So, you know, brave, brave doggo she was. Um, and I think, I think that deserves some recognition. She was a good doggo. So yeah, and I think it's better to learn from our mistakes than to just sort of hide them under the rug. Um, because, yeah, uh, NASA spokespeople recently said that they would never send, like, Mars dogs um, <laughs> to go and test the waters for human beings and things and I think that these dogs kind of made sure that other dogs would be safe in the future which I think is quite a worthy goal and I think it's amazing that they were so brave even though they didn't really have any say in it when lots of humans rather choose not to do this because it's really scary and I think that's pretty cool so yeah I thought she was an exemplary rover an amazing doggo and I had a lot of fun drawing her because she's really cute because stray dogs just I don't know they have this amazing charm which actually was something that these dogs were selected for as well um, they had to be photogenic and I think I think she was so to go back to Mars um, I also included Mars's two moons they're not true moons because they don't have sort of that round moon shape they actually are theorized to be asteroids that got caught in Mars's gravitational field um, and that's why they're such an irregular shaped thing and they also have really cool colors like yeah it's it's very cool you should check them out they're called Phobos and Deimos and yeah I thought that you know I might as well include them at first I was thinking of making the pose of like a be like oh I'm gonna catch this ball that is this moon you know um, or be howling at the moons and then I kind of thought she was firstly like more dignified than that but also it's a bit strange because they don't actually look round like balls so yeah it would be just like I'm gonna go and catch that rock and break all my dog teeth I don't know it's weird I don't think she would have done that <laughs> Anyway, so later on you'll see I write her name in Russian characters on her collar and I basically just spend the rest of this little section of my painting just touching everything up, giving everything some definition with some micron pens as you do. And yeah, I am kind of sad that the portion of where I painted the sky disappeared. Um, but it was very tedious because, I don't know, there was just a lot of blooms happening and you can sort of see a remainder of that uh, by the moons. And yeah, I'm just... I don't know I think my camera repressed the memory as well as uh, what I'm going with right now and I thought that on Mars 
there were so many different awesome like terrains that I could have used but I really liked the idea of using these sand dunes and they're tiny and it's so weird because you look at these pictures and you're like wow those are epic sand dunes and then you look to the right of this picture and there's the Mars rovers little wheel tracks and I don't know I kind of really felt that it was amazing how there were all these memes when the last Mars rover opportunity started losing its battery and dying and I thought you know from sending dogs to space to feeling sorry for robots humanity's doing okay we're going in the right direction anyway if you enjoyed this remember to like and subscribe and i will see you soon okay love you bye